Now, do pet names drive you crazy? According to a new survey, most women can't stand being called bird, chick or babe. We were having a bit of fun with this yesterday and lots of you have been in touch with your views. So we're going to bring you some of those in a second. But first, we went onto the streets of the capital to ask women which phrases they'd like to be added to the band list. Are pet names offensive or are we taking them too seriously? Joining me to discuss this are the author Peter Lloyd and comedian Kate Smurthwaite. Kate Smurthwaite, what really winds you up about pet names? Well, it's not a, any particular name that bothers me. What it is, is the, is the context in which it's used, isn't it? It's absolutely fine if you're, you know, really good friends with somebody and they have a nickname for you and you like it and they know you like it. Great, fantastic. But the difficulty comes when you're trying to have a business meeting and somebody says, oh, hello, Martin. Hello, Simon. Hello, sweetie. And you just can't help thinking, I'm not the one that's getting promotion at this meeting. It's just about kind of being taken seriously. And I know that if, I know that if, if somebody said to you, uh, you know, if I came on air and you called me Kathy, and I said, oh, actually, I prefer Kate, of course, you'd just call me Kate. You'd call me whatever I asked to be called. And I think it's amazing that we live in a world where we, we, we know that women, you know, because our, our survey shows it and, and your people you've met on the street show it, women don't like being referred to by these terms generally. So, you know, is it really too much to ask that either don't do it or just ask first is it all right if I call you this do you mind if I call you this you know oh, it's just a bit of a habit of mine and some women don't mind give those that do a chance to say what they'd rather be referred to well, as well we've been um, doing just that Let, let's have a listen to what Danielle has had to say she sent in this video explaining why she dislikes one pet name in particular as a trans woman I'm used to being called all kinds of things hen love dude but nothing not even sir gets under my skin quite like my dear. Deliberate misgendering can be frustrating, but it's rarely from malice, at least not from people who matter. It's usually just a misunderstanding or some confusion. My dear, however, well that's condescending and demeaning. It's dripping with passive aggression and stinks of self-superiority. Frankly, my dear, don't ever refer to me as your dear. Carla, meanwhile, hates some phrases but loves others. Had two examples there, Peter. My dear, uh, sweet cheeks. I, I mean, is it sexist? Is it demeaning to women? And if so, why does it continue? Well, I think it's really sad that the free market and mainstream culture is entertaining this outrage culture, which seems so pervasive at the moment. I mean, it's already taken over universities, and now it seems to be bleeding into advertising and marketing. I mean, this research was, was undertaken by Kellogg's. Um, you know, we know for a fact that banning words doesn't work, policing language doesn't work. It didn't work for Sheryl Sandberg when she wanted to ban the word bossy. It's not going to work now. And nor should it. It's all well in. It's like something from 1984. People just need to toughen up. Uh, you, you brought up the word uh, bossy there, Peter. I mean, that is often used for little girls, isn't it? And that's a sign of how early this starts. Yeah, but used in many different ways and, and against boys as well. I mean, I noticed that this research didn't look at all at the language that men don't feel comfortable with and at no point did it hold any women accountable for the language that they choose to use. So if we're really going to have this debate about whether language has power, and it does, then we need to do it equally. But let's be realistic. Language has power, but it's limited power. Uh, let's bring in Kate Smurthway uh, again on that. Should we, to use uh, another phrase that uh, women have said is deeply offensive to them, just man up and let it wash over us, Kate? Well, I think Peter's kind of completely missing the point. Um, nobody is saying that words need to be banned. And nobody, and interesting, he says, why are people so outraged? And yet not one of the people you interviewed was screaming or was outraged. They were just saying, this is how I'd rather be addressed. I don't really like this. And I think, you know, I think it's not a particularly shocking uh, thing to say. This is the term I'd prefer. And I, I think, you know, once people have made it clear what language they prefer, and it's pretty clear from this survey that women would prefer not, especially in the workplace, not to be called 
called babe and sweetie and love and those kind of terms. I think I think it's just not a big ask to say, hey, well, you know, if you've said I don't want to be addressed that way, let's just not do it in the same way that if, you know, if somebody corrects you that they prefer to be called, you know, Mr. or they prefer to be called Ms. or Mrs. or Miss, just just do what they've asked because that's just polite and civilised. And I don't think anyone is calling for words to be banned. But if I say, oh, actually, my name's not Kathy, it's Kate, and you continue to call me Kathy for days and weeks and months, I mean, I just... I just think, well, you're a bit unpleasant, don't I? I think that's really rude. And why would you keep doing that? And, and in actual fact, why are you doing that when you know it's going to annoy me? Um, so I, I think it's not a big ask. What, what amazes me is that there's a pushback. It's people going, well, it's my free speech. And I can say, well, it is your free speech. Say what you like. But by the same token, I think women should be absolutely free to say, I don't like that term. And, I'm, if, and in fact, I might not answer to it. Well, I mean, Pick I, you know... I, I agree, Kate. I agree with much of what you're saying. And I think everybody, women should absolutely be allowed to, to kind of, you know, modify the language that's used to describe them if they're not comfortable with that. But that applies to everybody. And because it's such a minor issue, it can just be done with a bit of humour on a case by case basis. It doesn't need to be to be a big well, issue. But I, but and I wonder, it, Peter, but I wonder yeah, Peter really Lloyd, some, point, some of the phrases that we're talking about could be described as being affectionate or humorous, for example, but there are others when you talk about women being ball breakers and when you talk about ambitious women with negative connotations that aren't necessarily applied to men, that we're talking in a little bit more serious territory here. Well, what I think is very interesting is that frequently it's women who use these terms to, to, to describe other women. So are we saying that we should be only policing the, women, uh, the language that women use or is it only a problem when men use it? And if that's the case, then why? Why is it only a problem when men use it? And what about I don't, but words that offend that. you, no, sorry, Peter, as a man? saying that. Nobody is saying that. You know, nobody is saying these words are only a problem when men say them. We're talking generally about the terms that we use. And I find it very strange to have this like, well, what about women? What about if women say it? You know, women can say sexist things, you know, and, and black people can say racist things and gay people can say homophobic things. None of these things are specifically about, you know, one group attacking on another. They're all about a culture and what kind of language we use in our culture. And we should all be looking at how can we use language better? Because as you said yourself, Peter, language does have power. So so let's use that power to create a more positive and constructive culture. Peter, and it's not, about, it's not about some sort of moratorium on individual words, tearing them out of the dictionary. It's about being part of a conversation about the best respectful language, especially in the workplace, where people really have a right to be treated respectfully. We are well, unfortunately well, running out of time. But Peter, I just want to get one final thought from you. Are there words that are used to describe men that offend you? Uh, not particularly, and, and if, if there are some I don't like, I certainly wouldn't want them banned. But it go, do you know, it always goes back to that old adage, sticks and stones may break my bones, but there will always be something to offend a feminist. Peter Lloyd. Well, that, no, that's just obnoxious, Peter sorry. You have, to, you have to give me a I chance we'll to respond to that. I think we'll let you carry on this That discussion. is ridiculous. That, no, hang on, I won't do your show again if you don't let me respond Go to on, that. Go on, Kate, have a word. Come on, that's ridiculous. I mean, that, first of all, that, like, first of all, to allow somebody on air, this is a women's rights movement, we're asking for equality, and to, to just come on and say that kind of thing. And secondly, he keeps saying this is a trivial issue, this is a trivial issue, that it doesn't happen very often. The reality, as you know from talking to women in the street, is that they all have words that bother them. This is something that affects loads and loads of women, and if he's not affected but by just it, said this well, lucky just him. About women. And if he thinks he's going to take that privilege and just wander on air and say obnoxious <laughs> things about a campaign for equality, then that is horrific bigotry. But, and I but it's, but it's to not it about equality because time. they didn't bother it's to disgusting. analyse what men think. It's not about equality. Look, if anything, this is probably the use of language in pet names is probably something that could be classed as a microaggression, and that means that the corresponding trauma yeah, and when is, those equ happen, is equally minuscule and, times over, and isn't and worth talking to about. Peter Lloyd, Kate Smurthway, I'm afraid we really, really are out of time there, but thank you both very much for your Thanks. contributions.